This is Dog Rescue TV. Subscribe to Dog Rescue TV and stay a while. Let's save some dogs. I don't know who they are. Um, but we're gonna start picking them up and spay and neuter them. We're gonna start TNRing. It's illegal, but um, we did it before. Thank you. 
with the disappearance of Yeah, she did. She's so shocked, I believe. I don't know how long she's been sitting in that house. I'm not even sure you're okay. Okay, so take one in. Okay. Thanks. this dog tonight or what's the story here? Yes, she's on our regular feeding route and I haven't seen her in a little while. I'd rather I'm with not the world. Have this recorded right now, okay? We can talk later. I'd rather not be on camera, okay? Okay. Thank you. So MoMA is becoming septic and may lose that rear leg that was squirting goo everywhere. And her overnight treatment up to $2,700. Just for the first night? Just for one night. Well, yeah, I mean, she'd have to go Critical to... Critical care uh, situation. Which I would do, you know, I mean, I would have her go to... A, yeah, you know, a medical place, foster, whatever. Somebody that would take care of it, you know. Right. But, I mean, I wouldn't have her just go and plop on somebody's couch to recover. <laughs> But, I mean, it's it's an ongoing cost and an ongoing recovery and not something to be taken lightly, obviously. Poor dog. We're getting yeah. there. We're getting We're there. Getting light. <laughs> um, she went to Foster Creek, which is Ains Vet, and she was in intensive care, ICU, 24-hour care. Um, she was literally on the brink. We got her blood cultures back, and she was literally hours from dying when we found her, which I didn't realize. She has lost quite a lot of weight, but look at that. Hello. She was actually playing. Oh, maybe I didn't bring you any food. How about we have you sit with her and we'll have her in the in the. I actually took well. a nap here when I brought her. <laughs> when I brought her to the hospital, I came and I couldn't drive because I was so tired. I actually took a nap on this very day. Oh my gosh! I called her. She can hear me. She's kitty in here. She was actually. Okay. Yeah. I was her nose now. Yep. She was actually howling a minute ago. Went to play outside. Are you kitty? There we go. You might want to see, these are her injuries in the leg that she almost lost. Here. It's okay, Mama. Don't worry. Hey, Don't lady. Don't worry. Mama. Look, Mama. Oh, and she, she, I know she was owned before because she's actually playing with toys. That's weird. And street dogs usually don't know what they to ignore, do with toys. They toys yeah. Right. And she knows exactly what to do with them. And she wanted to go out and play with the other dogs. She was owned before. Okay. Yeah. So, Erica, just six days ago, you rescued Mama from an abandoned home. She was septic and near mm -hmm. death. We followed you to the BCA Animal Hospital and she stayed there overnight. So, tell me where she went and what happened after that. So after that, um, the next morning we picked her up around 6.37 in the morning. Um, I brought her out here to Foster Creek, which is Ann's vet. And she was in ICU intensive care for a good three days. Uh, her chances were very slim, maybe 30% chance of survival. It, I think it was worse than that, and we didn't realize until we got the cultures back. Um, when we found her, she was within hours of dying, is what the culture was revealed. We didn't know how bad she was. So, so she was at Foster Creek for how long? I, did, I, I believe about three days. Okay. And then they released her to Anne's care. And so she's been here since then. Mm -hmm. and, and how is she doing now? Now she is a miraculous recovery. She was actually wanting to go play. She walked outside to go to the restroom. Um, I can smell that she probably needs to do that again. Did <laughs> <Is> she fart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
she was playing with toys, which is very rare. It just proves my point that she was an owned dog at some point. Um, usually street dogs have no idea what to do with toys. And she, I actually took a video of her pouncing on a toy and then going on her elbows and stretching out with her feet. So let me look at this. She was somebody's pet and they dumped her and they broke her spirit. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that she recognized when Sandro and I, or when I went in there, and she realized that it was a, someone she recognized, and maybe she realized that the world didn't suck as bad as she thought maybe it did. Well, because she was a dog that you knew from the neighborhood. Had she been in that house next door to yours? Or she no, was I didn't know where she was hanging out. You know, I didn't know where, she had puppies. I didn't know where the puppies were. Um, people steal them. People steal stray dogs' puppies. Mm. So that's probably they either froze to death or they were stolen. Okay. So she's lost a lot of weight, but because um, she's usually quite the chunky monkey. But um, somebody got her pretty good. I told her, let me know who did it. I'll get them. <laughs> yeah. What What exactly were her injuries once she got checked out and they could discover them all? She's got over a hundred deep puncture wounds all over her body. She was completely like a pin cushion, just completely had gone septic and she was in septic shock, full, full on septic shock. And from dogs? From dogs. Right. Yeah, several dogs, at least a good pack. And I wonder, you know, there were packs of nine to, to 20, so it could have been an entire, at least nine dogs probably got her at once. And the extreme wound on her leg was from dog bites as well? Yeah, just deep, deep puncture over and over again, puncture wounds. Mm -hmm. And um, then it had gone necrotic, so when they were flushing it out, just tissue, was just clumps of leg was coming off. Yeah, that's why they looked so big in the pictures, but it's since you know, been shrinking. She's using that leg. That's fabulous, because I believe I remember the initial uh, consultation thought that she might lose she's that the leg. Yeah, more, more she's more. walking on it fine. Now, yeah. yeah, she wasn't limping on the front arm. Well, I didn't see her walk before, but now the elbow's swollen, so I'm thinking that maybe somewhere in that cartilage was injured. So we're gonna take her back tomorrow and have that look at. See how she jumped when she oh, yeah. so, so she took a licking. And we'll keep her here for how long? Till so she's absolutely fine, and then she'll go up into our adoption program. Awesome. Yeah. So she is her sweetie pie. She's pretty traumatized though. She's kind of scared of of um, other dogs. They said that at the clinic another little dog ran up to her and she freaked out. You know, so it might take a while for her to to get over that initial trauma. But you know, she did want to play with other dogs. They came to visit her through the glass, and she has a boyfriend who looks just like her. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I imagine it will take some time with that many puncture wounds and, you know, all inflicted by other dogs. Yeah. But she seems awful peaceful now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's a tough little cookie. I mean, man, to survive all that, she shouldn't be, she shouldn't be alive. It's very, it's, you know, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm glad, because it would have broken my heart if I found her and they're dead. Right. I would be heartbroken. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time it's heartbroken, but I'd be heartbroken. Because I tried so hard to get her since, like, October, November. So at least four or five months. Did you know the black dog that was guarding her? He was from the house next door. He was one of the labs from the house next door. Okay. He, he really seemed very protective. He was going yeah. in and out and trying to see what was going on. That's very common in labs. So, Piggy does the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Piggy's definitely your guard dog. Yeah. She guards a lot of the uh, a lot of the dogs that come in too. So it's kind of like a satellite. <laughs> she was, She's like the referee in the house too, so it's, go. it's gotta be a lab trait. They're like peacekeepers. But those are the dogs. He was guarding the house next door to us too, so I wonder if he wasn't guarding that dog in there. 
The one that had passed? Yeah. Perhaps. She's lucky that she started so stout, too, because it helped that yeah. she had, you know, because we, you know, she used to eat a lot, so I mean, every, she, we would feed her a whole bag of dog food, and she would scarf down as much of it as she could. Really? She didn't know when she was going to eat again. Right. So she would literally eat, like, a 15-pound bag of dog food. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Dog Rescue TV. Subscribe to Dog Rescue TV and stay a while.